Aha. Okay, uh, let's... I think, yep, it looks like we are live. So, uh, welcome everybody to the first stream in a little while. <clears throat> well, at least it looks like I'm live. Uh, not getting any... Okay, let me adjust OBS really quick. It's not showing any game cap for just a second here. Let's see if this fixes it. Hey, there we go. We are curbling. Okay. <clears throat> Small glitch uh, fixed. Looks like we are good. Okay, and it's showing up that I am viewing, so it looks like we are good to go. So welcome, everybody, to the first stream in quite a while because holidays, birthdays, and anniversaries. So, yeah, I am back for the week uh, to resume more or less regular streaming schedules. Um, and that's where we're at. So this lovely little contraption is the Gerald. Uh, not to be confused with the incredibly ill-fated, that actually needs to be twisted just a bit, the incredibly uh, ill-fated Douglas, uh, which I should point out is still out there doing its thing, waiting for its transfer window um, home. Let me just adjust these really quick. So yes, the Douglas here is going to try and have a little bit more success than, uh, or the Gerald is going to have try and have a little more success than the uh, uh, Douglas did. Douglas didn't go so well. <laughs> uh, I should point out, uh, well, actually I should probably mention where we are going first. Uh, let me try and gather my thoughts to see if I can remember what on Kerbin, or I guess Isolin, I was working on. Um, yeah, okay, I should... Uh, the plan here is that we're going to McKenzie. Uh, McKenzie is a big ol' tasty planet that appears to have ground. Uh, when I say appears to have ground, yeah, not everything does. Uh, some planets are uh, a little bit, a little bit misleading, and we just end up going into the void. See previous videos. Um, but it has. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, White Guardian, what's going on? How are you? I was just mentioning that we are heading to McKenzie today and that it is slightly more planety than Isolin, so we need a large ship to get us there. And this right here, this whole thing, is what we are dropping. Let me actually, hold on a sec, I can't see all of your text. Let me adjust my browser window really quick. Uh, let's see, why, oh, here we go, the bar. There we go. Of all the things that could go wrong, it has to be an ad. The ad glitches so I can see the stream, but no audio. Uh, let's see. Can you hear me right now? I just want to make sure you don't mean that you can't hear me at all. Let me know if you can actually hear me, so I don't want to just be talking into nothing. So let me know if there's audio coming through. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will fix things. Should be working. My mic looks like it's working, and the little audio dealie is uh, showing me that it's working. I will hold off in explaining. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Well, I would assume, yeah, that's not my ad. I don't know. Um, blame, blame Jeb. He, he, Mech Jeb, you know, he was tinkering about, and he might have accidentally gone onto some uh, unsavory sites and uh, got a virus. So I would blame Jeb and his uh, inappropriate viewing habits. Uh, might have messed this up a little bit. <clears throat> hmm. Let's. Uh, let's see. Audio output. Yeah, uh, let's see. So apparently we were having some audio issues. I don't know if it's just the White Guardian or if it's on my end. So if anyone can hear me, go ahead and let me know uh, if you guys can hear me at all or if it's... or if something else is going on. In the meantime... <clears throat> Let's see. In the meantime, I am going to be resuming, finishing off the uh, the Gerald. Yeah, let's see. Um, take a week off, and what happens is uh, apparently we break things. Um, Uh, OK, 
Okay, let's see. Yes, yeah, so apparently we're getting some audio issues. I'm actually, let me turn it on and see if I can hear myself. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, I can hear myself. It sounds like it's just a, an issue on White Guardian side. So I will go ahead and finish building our little friend here while we uh, while he tries to get it sorted out. So yes, this is this friendly fella is the Gerald, and we need some control because. Well, actually, I'm going to wait to describe it until the White Guardian fixes it because funny story. Uh, yes, funny story that involves explosions. So. What am I looking for? Uh, oh, I should do it by size. I'm looking for the these guys, the Verner. <laughs> Add fine. Well, hope. It wasn't a good ad. He said, having ad issues. So I want four of these, and I'm hoping that they don't interfere. Okay, you might think. Actually, I'm just going to go. <laughs> Go ahead and delete this ladder because, <coughs> honestly, um, these are, as I'm deleting this, I'm making sure I'm saying the right thing. These are pointless. Yeah, we don't need those ladders. We do, what is this? Uh, apparently we still have some leftover ladders from a previous build of the Gerald. Uh, those are the ones we need. I'm going to go ahead and leave those because Symmetry likes to be a jerk sometimes. And if I get rid of those, it might get rid of what I need. So we are going to... Yeah, I think we're just leaving those. Uh, yep. Definitely just going to leave those. And let's check our burner uh, placement here. Heh, <laughs> burner, burner. Ooh, the bad puns. All, that's not even a pun. That's just really terrible rhyming. It's already started. Let's see. Um, I'm probably going to want to put this down. Hopefully, let me know when, if and when you can hear me, uh, Guardian. I don't want to just uh, explain to you what's going on and then have it not work. Uh, let's see. I think a good place for this would be right there. Uh, that was not four times symmetry. We want four times. <clears throat> Should be good. Should be good. It's working. Yay! Audio glitches, mm, we love those. <clears throat> yes, we definitely love those. So I'm assuming by it working means you can hear me. Go ahead and give me a fish head or some other form of communication if you can actually hear me. I think we are going to go all out. I'm hoping that the weight doesn't cause some problems, but <clears throat> it shouldn't. And by shouldn't, I mean it probably will. <coughs> Uh, we'll put this... I wonder if those can deploy uh, like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Looks like we should be good. I'm going to assume that they can. Uh, let's see. So, parachutes, we are good. Um, good, well, I'm glad you're here. So, yes, this, uh, as I was saying to nobody because audio issues, this is our friend, the Gerald. Um, the Gerald is going to be taking us to Mackenzie. And uh, Mackenzie looks to be a bit of a jerk to get to um, because you like to create really mean things. Uh, so <clears throat> the idea is that, like usual, we want to actually land there and do some pretend science since there isn't science yet. And once we do our pretend, okay, once we do our pretend science, then we're going to come back and dock with our return ship. So we need something that can land on Mackenzie and without using any thrust and then get into orbit. So the gravity is about 1.2 times Isolin. Uh, this should have enough delta V to do it. However, here is where things get tricky and I'm doing things the Kerbal way. Uh, I tested, so this is this itself, you see the pod right there, um, the engine stops right there. This itself, <clears throat> uh oh, we already have a link. <laughs> Oh, Waluigi, yes, it didn't take too long. Uh, I should mention after uh, confirming that we got... <laughs> yes. Uh, I should mention before uh, I get to what I was going to say that this lander here I did test. <clears throat> and by test, I mean I hurled it into... I got it into orbit 
and I hurled it into, uh, oh, actually, let me make a, an action group for these. I hurled it into Kerbin's atmosphere, and see if you can guess what the result was. Uh, there are heat shields on it, so ideally this is going to be entering uh, and landing on Mackenzie. So see if you can guess my uh, <coughs> issue that I had with it. Uh, I'm sure you can pick it out because obvious thing is obvious. Uh, let's see, is that all the RCS? Yeah, I want to make sure those are off and that this fuel tank... Is there a way to disable a fuel tank, like to not have it be connected to anything because I don't want to be able to use that uh oh crud I just did my state dang it <laughs> uh nope that's not what I want I wanted it in custom one let's try that again okay yes now we toggle it <clears throat> maybe uh okay both of them are set up yes I don't want to waste my mono propellant in this um beforehand when I have my RCS on because I will need it Right click, then click the green arrow. Which green arrow are we talking about? Oh, you mean for the fuel tank? <clears throat> Let me uh, get out of action group and see. Uh... Hey, there you go. You're a genius. Yes, learn things new every day because I've only been playing this for over a year, right? Okay, yeah, so tell me if you can guess what the uh, <laughs> burning death problem was that I had testing this. The uh, actual lander, not the whole ship, because the whole ship is actually working quite brilliantly. Oh, I should have checked my crew. Yep, uh, not check your staging, check your crew. Because we need to pick who is going on this mission to Mackenzie, actually. <clears throat> that would probably be a good thing. Uh, okay, so, oh, what? Uh, we need somebody... That can hold two, that can hold one. So we're going to send down, um, we're gonna send down one person and this while two stay up there. Okay, <clears throat> since you're here, you get to help me decide who is going to go on the completely safe and not possible to kill someone mission to Mackenzie. So who are we gonna take? We need three Kerbals. Uh, let's see. I think we have to take Waluigi at this point because of the fantastic skin. Uh, but who else Who else are we going to take? Uh, while you're typing that, um, I'm going to save this and go and set up a an alarm clock for our transfer window since I know that uh, we need one. I don't think I've set one. So I'm going to go in here just in case to set up an alarm for our transfer to McKenzie. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Do I have one? Wow, we have one. Okay, uh, waste of time. Apparently we have one. 280 days. Because I'm genius. I is smart. Uh, let's go ahead and warp that. So while we're waiting, yes, who are we going to send other than Waluigi uh, to Mackenzie? <clears throat> and keep in mind, most of our little mates are out lost in various stages of... Uh, <laughs> uh, nervousness and fear. Mo yes, the tough decision. I <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yes, tough decision. Let's wait for a transfer window. Then I will go back because uh, we need to look at them, not because you forgot anything, but just because we like to see their pretty faces anyway, right? Definitely the reason. <clears throat> so while we're waiting for the transfer window, uh, you might have seen this, but uh, here is the newest, newest addition to the... Uh, I guess the Kerbal crew um, joining the ranks of all the Amiibos. It is, yes, my friends, that is our newest addition uh, to the crew. Yeah, what do we think? And yes, that's the actual, the soapstone. That's totally not uh, a little squishy thing. That is uh, the actual, it's actually solid. So yes, that is our, Newest addition to our little uh, um, Amiibo crew, and I am quite pleased with it. I think he's awesome looking. <clears throat> okay, back to our uh, vehicle assembly building because we didn't forget uh, the Kerbals. Okay, here we go. Who do we want to send? 
we have Waluigi go going. You know, we actually need uh, we need we need some more Kerbals, don't we? So if you want to name somebody new, uh, and I would suggest somebody with maximum stupidity because that's what you have to use to uh, be willing to go on this mission because reasons. Uh, yeah. So if you want to make somebody new, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, who else are we taking? So we've got Waluigi. He's going to be the one actually going down uh, to the surface, by the way. I'm only going to have one going down. But we still need... We only need two more um, because I need to keep all of these empty. Let me just... While you're doing that, I'm going to... Let's go for the random names. <clears throat> uh, you mean the random as in some of the ones that are already in there? Or you want me to make a new random one? <laughs> okay... Uh, new, new Kerbal, uh, Flapston Kerman. <laughs> I quite like that. That is a, uh, Flapson. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to ask if Flapson is a, a boy or a girl, but that kind of sounds like a male name. Uh, I think Flapst, we need a tourist on this mission with max stupidity and about half courage. Neither veteran nor badass. But yeah, I'm definitely going to say that Flap, Flat, flat, that's like an abomination of uh, letters. I love that. <laughs> yes, everything sounds better with that combination of letters. So let's uh, put our little buddy Flapson in there. Yes, Flapson, my friend, you were going. Uh, and I'm going to take Trash Can. I think Trash Can is a good one to go. Uh, because honestly, I think that's where this mission is going. So Flapson... Trash can and Waluigi are going. Uh, I think... Let me just run by my staging really quick because that has been many, many issues before. So those engines start. <laughs> yeah, we're going to deposit Trash Can on uh, Mackenzie because nobody really wants to be his friend and he's one of those stinky guys. Uh, so those ditch. Okay, just a sec. Let's make sure, yes, that, that. No, we don't want you there. We're going to put you up there. That, yes, that, yes, that, yes. Okay, um, staging is good. We are in our transfer window to McKenzie. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Many things. I should mention now what went wrong in my testing. Uh, I'm doing this the Kerbal way. And by the Kerbal way, I mean I had two catastrophic failures, so I figure we're at a good place that we can launch. Um, those catastrophic failures were in the actual lander. Uh, this guy here that we're now seeing the insides of. I launched it uh, into... Actually, let me go ahead and set it. <coughs> Mackenzie's our target. So I launched it into a high orbit, and then I tried to re-enter it in Kerbin, which is a pretty good analog for Mackenzie because the atmospheres are, you know, similar. And what happened was... Let's see, where's Mackenzie? Uh, that... The heat shields worked brilliantly, uh, but at about 40,000 uh, or 40 kilometers in the atmosphere, the whole thing flipped because it's actually incredibly stable and it wants to go as a rocket should facing the right way up and it burned everyone inside and exploded catastrophically. Um, so I went ahead and added some air brakes on it a la SpaceX style, you know, with their little grid fins. Uh, let me see if I can show you. That's the engine. You can see... Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, you see all the uh, air brakes. So yeah, I put a bunch of air brakes on it. Those worked well uh, until they exploded, and then it spun, and then it exploded again. So I figure uh, if I add some reaction wheels and uh, Werner engines for a little bit of control, what could possibly go wrong, right? So yeah, we're just going to assume that things are not going to fail catastrophically because... Two tests when they both fail means that we're, you know, third time's a charm sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm just going to assume that everything is going to work uh, and that nothing could possibly, possibly go wrong. And we will be using, again, MechJeb just for the launch to make sure we get into a perfect um, orbit to rendezvous with McKenzie. Because I don't, with all the extra crap that I added on this, yeah, I'm a little low on Delta V, I think. Uh, it's a little risky. Oh, guess we're going. So yeah, without further ado, uh, the Gerald is off. And it is to be as efficient as possible. We have done asparagus staging. 
everything I could to save Delta V, short of adding more boosters, but at this point it's a little ridiculously large as it is. So we've got asparagus staging, but I did have to add extra weight with the air brakes, the Werner engines, and the uh, outboard... Um, oh, God, what are... The, the command wheel, the control wheel, that's on uh, the actual lander. The one I added right, uh, right down there. So between the Werner engines and the extra reaction wheel, I'm hoping that it'll stay upright on re-entry. I don't think it's going to stay upright on re-entry, <laughs> which is why we're sending trash can and Waluigi. Uh, yeah, if Naga was here, he'd probably be uh, swearing at us for uh, sending Waluigi to his death, but he's not here to defend himself, so Waluigi gets to be the first to die. I mean, try and not die. Definitely try and not die. But I should mention, uh, Guardian, that uh, yes, I did indeed get um, Mario Kart 8 for uh, my birthday. Linda got it for me, and we actually were able to play... Uh, with Naga um, online on, let's see, the Monday after. So that was the 29th. <clears throat> so yeah, we actually were able to play online on the 29th. And it's, oh, I'm guessing you still don't have a Switch, but we don't care if we trigger you at this point. Yep, Waluigi gets to be the first to die. Uh, Mario Kart's amazing. You need to get it so that we can all play online and stream it. It was so much fun playing it. Uh, I hate to, you know, do that to you because I know school and work and things taking money but oh man yeah i'm just gonna say it was lots and lots of amazing fun uh, we played battle mode and uh, races online and quite good i must say uh naga brought his little waluigi cart um to the mix and uh, linda ended up actually beating us both of us <laughs> a few times uh so sort of uh, wipe the smug look off of waluigi's face but yeah, it was a blast playing that online. So far, our uh, launch looks quite good. Our asparagus staging has gone well. You'll notice that I'm using the really, really large um, rocket decouplers there to make sure these heavy, heavy boosters um, <clears throat> get away from the ship. And even then, they're almost struggling to do it because they're so big. But uh, the extra asparagus staging is totally going to be worth it in the long run because uh, the Douglas has enough going against it as it is that uh, I don't need to make separation be an issue. But it's looking pretty good so far. I don't even need my uh, RCS on uh, to keep it stable. And just watching my Apple apps here, we're getting up into a really high orbit before we uh, do our ejection burn to Mackenzie. And I need to say that in all my uh, play testing, you know, my offline testing, I have never sent anything to Mackenzie. So if you know something that I don't, uh, don't tell me because Waluigi deserves whatever he gets. Just saying, sorry, Naga's not here. Waluigi deserves whatever he gets on his uh, journey to Mackenzie. So yeah, if it's glitched out, oops, you didn't tell me. I didn't hear anything about that, right? And look at the plume on that. We are going quite nicely. But yeah, there is a smidge of lag because of how big this is. Yeah, uh, I should also mention, other than the catastrophic uh, re-entry uh, disasters that I had, that I'm not really sure if this has enough Delta V to get to McKenzie and to bring everyone home. That's why we're sending not even the expendables. These are like, well, as uh, Trash Can uh, shows, these are literally the dumpster scrapings of the Kerbal crew. Um, these aren't even the uh, college career fair kids that everyone picked up and promised lots of glory to. These are, you know, the absolute dumpster scraping Kerbals. Uh, so that's that's why uh, we're sending them on a risky mission is because uh, nobody is going to miss them. Yeah, these guys, uh, no family. Uh, they're the creepy people who sit uh, in the break room and just stare at you and don't say anything. Uh, yeah, real creepy Kerbals, so that's why they're all going. <clears throat> and uh, good old Flapston just sort of wandered in. He was uh, just wandering around the grounds just uh, the morning of, and Gene and the crew decided to hire him right then and there because they needed somebody uh, with his characteristics to be willing to go to McKenzie. Okay, final separation. Just going to watch and make sure it goes well. 
and perfect yes and so now we have the full the full meaty tank our quad emu engine providing lots of thrust moderate efficiency but that's okay um yeah we should be good heating up a little bit but the protective shell should keep everything from roasting but if somebody does roast again they're not going to be missed they don't have any friends back at the uh, space center so hey actually uh do you still in evolution do you still consider uh, the space center the kerbal space center or have you named it something else, even if you just named it, you know, secretly to yourself? Is it still called the Kerbal Space Center in your mind? Okay, uh, still getting a bit of slowdown. I'm not quite sure why. But the burn is going nicely. Um, and I think we should be okay. As far as uh, getting into orbit and our ejection burn, I'm just a little worried... Well, you could have given it some secret hidden special name, but uh, Kerbal Space Center still it is. Good to know. But yeah, our uh, little dumpster buddies, they were just sort of wandering around. You know, they were the creepy ones at the, uh, at the Space Center. They're the type of people that they aren't actually doing anything wrong, but uh, management is looking for every reason possible to try and fire them. So instead of firing them, they just gave them a chance to go on a uh, mission to the most dangerous place they've ever visited. Uh, so that's much easier than firing the creepy Kerbals, is just to send them on a one-way trip. They don't think it's a one-way trip, of course, uh, but it's probably not going to lie be a one-way trip. We're not quite high enough to deploy that yet, so I'm going to wait... Um, I don't want to risk anything here. Oh, I think, yeah, we can't warp any faster because we're still in the atmosphere. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so far so good. We do have uh, this stage, once we ditch it, we do have um, a super efficient. I believe that I put on, that's the uh, super, super efficient. If you remember, it has... Uh, one of the engines, I'm pretty sure it's that. It's the, what is it, the 7.5 meter? Yeah. It has a uh, 400, its ISP is 400, and it's only uh, liquid and oxidizer, so it's a super, super efficient engine. Okay, now we can deploy it to uh, reveal the Gerald and all its glory. Yes, the Gerald is a beautiful ship, right? So this is going to be our ejection stage and this I'm hoping will get us uh, our capture and circular circularization uh, into McKenzie. Uh, I believe it's going to have enough Delta V. Don't quote me on that uh, and don't tell Waluigi if not but uh, we're gonna hope that it is. Oh no I I thought you were done with school already. Um, when does uh, school get out? I thought you were uh, finished this week or last week. When are you uh, going to be all finished with uh, school by chance so that you can celebrate by not doing thinking things? And yes, that is a, a nuclear engine to get us home from Mackenzie, if there's anyone to get home. Start of July. Dang, that's really, uh, that's a lot later than I thought it would be. So I'm guessing it's uh, super busy between now and then, right? <clears throat> and we are done. Okay, that's close enough. I don't need this to... Dagnab oh, I need to turn those off. There we go. I thought I turned all those off. Oh, that's the burner. Okay, good. Could be worse. <clears throat> Yeah, the um, school usually got out at the end of May for me, but I did have to take, uh, when I was in college, some uh, summer classes to make sure I um, graduated on time. Yes, well, wish uh, don't wish me good luck. Wish uh, the dumpster trash of the Kerbal community, uh, or of the Kerbal Space Center, luck, because they are the ones that need it. But yes, good luck with school. I will see you next time, and uh, yes, we will take all the luck you can give us, because... It's not going well for them. So yeah, have a good time. Thank you for stopping by, even for just a uh, little bit. I will see you next time. Uh, I don't think the Kerbals will, though, by the way. So 
Okay, we're in a 250. Oh, wait. Before you go, I forgot. Oh, how could I forget? I hope you're still there. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, oh, boom. Okay, there. Now you can go. Officially, you can leave now. <clears throat> so we need our rejection angles for this maneuver. Okay, let's go ahead and set it. How much do we need? So we're going to need... 1300 meters per second for you know, the burn, which we should have. Okay, we don't quite have in this stage. Uh, that's okay. 1300 meters per second. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Yeah, what makes uh, getting to someplace like. So Mackenzie isn't really that far out. Uh, compared to some of the other planets. Uh, but what makes it such a jerk is the inclination difference uh, with Isla. And you can see that it's quite lopsided. So getting there is going to be a bit tricky. Okay. Oh, hey, we're getting an encounter already. That's... I like that. Let me go ahead and mess around with it and see what we can get here. I'm just wondering if I'm going to need to adjust the ascending or descending node, if that will get us any closer. Whoop, I saw one up there. Yeah, right there. Let's try. I might just have to do a general area burn and uh, tweak it once we've gotten out of uh, Kerbin's, or I mean, Island's sphere of influence. So I'm going to go ahead and try one more and just hope that uh hope that we <laughs> if i do a burn here without tweaking too much that we get close enough uh we can get close enough with some adjustment burns later so where what are we doing i okay so i should be able to tweak this with my radial in and out i would think or not guess I can't tweak it with radial in or out. Let's... Yeah, so this is going to be a little bit trickier than I was hoping for. Yep, yeah, okay. I'm just going to do what... Uh, what our transfer window planner said we should do and hope that it works out later. But like I said, it's a doomed crew anyway, so meh. <clears throat> they're uh, they're perfectly content with giving uh, sacrificing one for the team. They're not really, but they don't know. Um, so let's see if I can do anything to bring it a little bit closer. So what's four? Let's see, four point seven. Let's see if this is getting it closer or farther. That's obviously. <laughs> A little bit farther since it's not even there. 4.3. Yeah, that's a little closer. So uh, why don't I go ahead and do... No, you know what? I don't fully trust that. I think we're getting farther as I do that. Okay, well, we're just going to go ahead and do that burn anyway and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> Apparently, this is uh, our window. Yeah, so we're at our window, which means it should work. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I bet with an inclination change we can do that. So we are good. We're going to go ahead and um, burn. What's our burn time on that? Five and a half minutes. So we want to set oh, whoops, our alarm clock. I'm going to actually set that. I need to recreate that. I'm going to set that five minutes out. Um, duh. Let's go like this. Okay, I want it five minutes out because that is going to be a long burn. And the second engine that I have uh, is, let's see, 31 minutes, 38. 
yeah, it's going to be a long burn. Um, and since I have to switch engines, I want to make sure I have plenty of time. So let me quick save and we will warp. Time warp. Um, oh, that was... <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad I just quick saved because I <laughs> accidentally just blasted right through the... Uh, the alarm. Okay, let's stop wasting time. <laughs> yeah, I know that on a massive uh, solar system scale, those few minutes aren't going to make much of a difference, but I don't want to risk anything. Let me see if my alarm is still up there. Yep. Okay, so let's redo this. Okay, so our burn time, our half burn time is two and a half minutes, but in stage 15, we only have 300 meters per second. And the next one, we have plenty, but it's thrust is much lower. So I'm going to guess, whew, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, around four minutes, I'm going to start the burn. Three and a half, I'll say. I'll go with three and a half, and if that doesn't work, uh, I, I'll quick save right before the burn. And if three and a half isn't good enough, then I will uh, start earlier or later, depending. I'm going to save it right here at five minutes um, to the burn and go to three and a half minutes and start burning then. Since it is a two and a half minute burn, even with this big engine, so I would imagine this is going to be more or less close. So let's throttle up for our ejection burn and see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully good things happen. Uh, yeah, hopefully good things. I'm not sure. Yeah, this could be end up just being a giant nightmare. Okay, now we stage. Yes, okay, so this... Oh, this isn't quite... Yeah, it is. Okay, sorry. Backtracking. This is the engine with 400 for a specific impulse. It's, as far as I've seen on regular, you know, mod engines, it's the most efficient engine I've seen. Uh, oh, wow. Dang, I timed that really well, didn't I? <laughs> Look at that. Our burn time and half burn time. Yeah, I... Sweet. I managed to time that perfectly. <laughs> anyway, this uh, liquid oxidizer-based engine, as far as I've seen, is the most efficient engine uh, pretty much anywhere that I've uh, really seen. I love using this. And what I found is that uh, it works really well when you uh, scale it down to the 5-meter size. Um, so I like... It's sort of my go-to... Uh, I guess interplanetary engine when I'm not using the nuclear engine. I really, really like this one uh, because of its really, really amazing efficiency. But we're going to need all the efficiency we can to make sure <laughs> the Gerald can get to McKenzie. Uh, again, not super hopeful, but um, Waluigi flaps in and trash can are willing to uh, give it a go. Let me check on map view how this is going. Again, I'm not going to quick save until after I have left uh, Isolin's sphere of influence and I've done my adjustment burn because I want to make sure that I'm going to get close enough um, to Mackenzie to justify the burn. I don't want to save and be in a place where I can never reach it where I'd have to use, you know, 10,000 meters per second to do so. But the burn looks... To, oh, I should actually make sure we're pointing in the right direction. I don't think I need my RCS. I don't want to burn any of my extra fuel with the Werner engines. Make sure this is... Okay. So I put Werner engines on the descent stage. Uh, and the... Dis okay, the lander, I should say. Um, I have some Werners up there to keep it from catastrophically spinning upon reentry, which is a thing that happened several times uh, testing it. Um, but I don't want it to be pulling fuel from the lander engines I want it to be pulling from the active stage because I need all of the Delta V. Mackenzie has one point, roughly 1.2. Um, the surface gravity is 1.2 from uh, Kerbin slash Islin, so it's harder to get off of. And the atmosphere is even more dense, so it's going to require everything I can throw at it. That's why I don't want my uh, RCS, my Werner engines, to be pulling from... Uh, the actual lander stage. I want it to be pulling from the main stage, but I don't even need those right now with the engine, so let's hope the very, very long burn goes uh, quite well. And in the meantime, let's take a look at our little doomed buddies. Yes, wave at the camera. <laughs> you, 
Yes, uh, you're definitely not going to be killed. Definitely not. Let's see if we can see him in there. So far, everything is going uh, swimmingly. Yep, they're chuffed about it, too. No complaints. Oops, sorry. Camera locked. <clears throat> Let's take a look at where we're going. Have a sip of beverage while uh, we wait. Let's take a look. Yes, our apoaps is rising. We are officially fast enough to be out of the sphere of influence, I believe. And we have just a few hundred more, few hundred more meters per second on the burn, and then we are going to call it quits. And by quits, I mean leave the sphere of influence and see if we can't tweak the encounter uh, a little bit later. By later, I mean many, many days. <clears throat> How much? So we've still got that 2,000 meters per second of delta V. It'll be about 1,500 once this burn is done. So I'm actually a little more, about this much, a little more optimistic than I was uh, at launch that I'm going to have enough delta V to get the encounter and um, hold on a sec, just making sure we're going the right direction, that I'm going to be able to get the encounter and um, get a capture orbit before I drop the uh, Gerald Lander. This up here is what our return stage is. That's uh, our quad nuke that's going to take us home. Uh, I should probably open up the solar panels as well in just a little bit here. Wherever they are. I think, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it while we're burning. There's no reason not to. Uh, I think I only put... Oh, and the, the uh, antenna, because of all the things that can go wrong, I don't want the antenna to be the thing that kills everyone. <laughs> Which might end up being... That's usually how everyone dies, is because they can't communicate. But I don't want that to be the problem this time. So I'm going to open everything early... Uh, did I not? Oh, I did put batteries on there. I was making sure I put uh, extra batteries on uh, the lander because <laughs> that would not be not be good. I've done that before. Uh, didn't want to kill everyone because I didn't have power on the lander, but looks like I did. So uh, I'm at least not completely incompetent. Okay, our burn is coming to a close. What's the? Th I forgot to check the thrust on this. So 2400. Yeah, that's not bad on uh, for how efficient it is. The, yeah, the efficiency is what, like half of the nuclear engines? It's really, really nice. I like that. Okay, about done with the burn. I'll take a look at the map view once we're done to see what sort of damage we've done. Just about done. Okay, call that good. Let's see. Yes, we have... Uh, we have a something of an encounter. Let's get out of the sphere of influence, like I said. Uh, and then I will go ahead and try and adjust everything. It looks like we almost had an encounter with uh, Pandora. Okay. Let's see what we can do to fix it. Hey. Oh. Nope, that's uh, not fixing it. Uh, you know what? I think that it actually wanted us to get an encounter down there. Um, yeah, I think that when it was planning uh, our encounter, it actually assumed that we would be connecting down there. So let me see if I can tweak it uh, to get an encounter down um, at the lowest point, that would probably be the most efficient instead of trying to fix what we have right now. Man, I w hope it's even possible. <laughs> I could have uh, really done something wrong here. Let me actually see. Whoop. Let's see what the um, maneuver planner would say. If it can even get us an encounter. I'm just curious to see if this... 
Yeah, okay, so it's right there in an 1,800 meters per second. I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up. Uh, I'm just going to... You know what? No, I'm not going to suck it up. I'm going to try uh, to see if I can get an encounter down here that's more efficient um, before I go ahead and waste all that Delta V um, burning and just getting an encounter up there. So let me see if there isn't a way to make sure we get an encounter down here near our uh, periaps a little bit. That would be way more efficient, obviously. But I don't think... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be possible. We can keep our little Kerbal fingers crossed, though. Yeah, that's not going to do it. What about radial in or out? Yeah, I really, I don't think uh, we're going to be able to do that, which is quite, un whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, that looked a little closer, didn't it? Oh, but I don't think that's any different than what uh, Mech Jeb would do for us anyway. Oh, oh, hey, that was a little closer. Did you guys see that? Hey. Oh, we got one, and that's 500 meters per second cheaper than... Uh... Oh, look at that. I actually did it. Sweet. Okay, time to pat myself on the back for doing a mediocre task. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, let me go ahead and look at... Mackenzie to see um, how close we're actually getting. Then I'm going to use the adjustment, the note editor here, <clears throat> to see if I can get it a little bit closer. Okay. Try and sort of orient myself here. Let's drop it. Whoa, 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 whoa. That. And for some reason, I lost it as a target. Let's I think we need to drop this to point one since it was making such big jumps. And of course, for some reason, it loses hitting it as a target. Okay, did it again. Whatever. Okay. Yes, everything appears to be glitching out because uh, reasons, I guess. <clears throat> this isn't adding too much to the burn, I don't think. Is that going up or down? It's really hard to tell sometimes <clears throat> which direction we're facing. Oop. So we need to come in. Yeah, I think it is prograde. I don't remember... I don't think Mackenzie has a moon, so we don't need to worry about any sort of moon encounter. Hey, 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 here we go but I actually would like to be, yes, on the inside for a little bit of uh, help. There we go, how close is that going to bring us? 510, that's actually uh, pretty close. Let me see if I can cir whoa, circularize it just a bit. That, okay, I'm gonna drop all the measurements down here to point one so that I can get it a little bit more precise, but that looks uh, exactly like what I want. I just want to make sure it's not at such a funky angle. Oop, that's... Yeah, I don't think uh, beggars... I Yeah, uh, I have a feeling I'm going to just have to take what I can get. I don't really have a target, a specific target that I'm trying to land at anyway. 352, that's close enough. I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's inside the rings. Uh, <clears throat> I am going to quick save. And let's see, auto warp. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and perform the next maneuver. I'm gonna check my electric charge here, make sure everything is uh, going well. Burners are hopefully, yeah, they're not pulling fuel out of there, which is really, really good. I did not want them to pull fuel out of there. It should be pulling it out of this tank, just make sure. Actually, I'm not sure where it's pulling it from, but hey, free fuel, I will take it. <clears throat> Okay, so far so good for the Gerald, and uh, Trash Can and crew seem to be quite pleased with uh, with what's going on. No issues on their side, so yeah, they haven't gone insane like uh, our buddy Rupert and uh, Naga did on the trip 
to uh, Valkner, which is good because that was uh, not a pleasant, uh, not a pleasant voyage. <clears throat> Do I have enough Delta V in this tank? Stage 13. Yes, I have enough for this entire burn and a little bit of my capture burn. So very good, very good. I have <clears throat> to play with before I need uh, to actually use the lander. I've got, what is that, 32-ish hundred meters per second. So that should be enough to get my capture in stable orbit on Mackenzie. Um, hoping. But I've been wrong before. I'm usually wrong. <clears throat> Everything uh, seems to be going well. I don't think I messed anything up catastrophically, um, which is good. There is one thing that concerns me, and that's a lack of solar panels on the lander. But as long as I don't stay down there too long, or I just drop off trash can or Waluigi and hurry and leave, we should have enough, because I did put a battery up here. <clears throat> so this has uh, <clears throat> 270 electric charge. That has 1,000, and I know that these two each have their own electric charge. So as long as I don't use my uh, SAS too much on the descent and stick to the uh, RCS thrusters, I should be okay for at least a few Kerbal hours uh, on the surface, which is all we need to realize that we've done something horribly, horribly wrong. Another long burn here. But yeah, I really enjoy the way that engine looks, the blue plume. Like I said, I think that's probably one of my absolute favorite engines um, in this game, the mod engines. Obviously, I haven't played around with every mod, but on the Space Y or some of the more common parts, I think that's up there in my top three. I'm going to turn off the uh, display just to sort of look around. <clears throat> Actually, you can usually see the planets. Oh, there, we had one somewhere. Let's see if I can scan and find it. It's like the uh, fly swatting game on Mario Paint. Uh, it was somewhere. Oh, well, it's out there somewhere. I saw it. Wait. Is that it? That it? There's Islin. Well, that's where we l left. Yeah, that's uh, where we left not long ago, but uh, obviously that's not where we are going. <clears throat> And for those of you who have not seen the mod before, um, that is the sun, and the disc around it does indeed spin with it. It's really, really nice. When you do a time warp, you can see. I have not actually tried to fly anything into the sun yet. I, I haven't actually done that on the vanilla game either, now that I think about it, but I know that it's pretty hard to hurl space trash into the sun. Uh, we do have a space trash can, I guess. Not quite the same thing. everything going according to plan, which is actually makes me a bit nervous when that happens. Another long burn, but obviously it's not as long as it would be if I had a nuclear engine. That would take probably 30 minutes to <laughs> do. I do have uh, the quad nuke, so I'm using a nuclear engine for the return. Uh, see if I can show you, show you. but that uh, that's the quad nuke. It's the four of them attached together to give a little bit more thrust. It does obviously weigh more, but on a bigger ship like this, it's uh, obviously a little easier and a little less time consuming. So I don't have to sit and watch a 40 minute burn every time I want to go somewhere. <clears throat> Everyone looking quite pleased inside. It's actually a nice view out there. <laughs> See, I don't need the vessel display up. I actually don't need any of this up just yet while I'm doing the burn. I'm going to hide that up there for a minute. So I should point out that I was looking forward to, I've been looking forward to uh, SpaceX's uh, launch to the uh, space station where they would be reusing the Dragon capsule. I've been looking forward to that for quite a while, and I was actually sitting down ready to go watch it uh, when it was supposed to launch the first time. I think it was on a Thursday. Uh, but then the weather got delayed, so of course I didn't make it home from our anniversary trip in time to watch it live. I missed it by like half an hour or something, so I'm going to have to go rewatch the launch 
um, on YouTube, but I was so mad that I missed it live. It sounds like it went really, really well. <clears throat> so I'm super excited to go watch that again, but it's cool that uh, they were able to reuse the bass and the dragon. So I, that sort of uh, launch where they did both of those is really exciting. Um, I'm really excited about what they're doing and what's coming in the future as far as going back to the moon and or Mars. But yeah, totally missed the launch live. I haven't actually gone back to watch it yet. I'm probably going to do that tomorrow or Wednesday. But it sounds like it went really well, so that's quite exciting. I wonder if we can find Mackenzie out here somewhere. I'm not sure. I don't want to play Mario Paint or uh, Minesweeper to try and find it. To click on the planet and have it explode. Very long burn. <clears throat> but we still haven't burned through our, our little stubby tank, so I'm uh, really pleased with how efficient this is. That is, I should point out, the 7.5 meter, so it's a huge, huge size. That's more the uh, regular large size um, that comes with the vanilla game. <clears throat> But we should be just about done with the burn. Now I want to start watching the Delta V. Yeah, we're going to actually have just a little bit left, which is really nice. Then I'll check to make sure our encounter is as it was, but I'm really happy I was able to save 500 meters per second. Obviously, we're adding, what, like a year or two to their <laughs> travel time, but if they're probably going to die on... Uh, entering the atmosphere anyway. You know, it's not such a big deal, I wouldn't imagine. Okay, since it wasn't entirely accurate, um, I will need to... Okay, just make sure we get stabilized. I will need to do one last correction burn, but I'm going to wait until uh, I get into its sphere of influence because I have a feeling anything I do now, um, like half a meter per second, is going to have dramatic... Uh, results so you know what let me actually see what Meg Jeb says I am gonna quick save now that I didn't screw everything up in a catastrophic and violently explosive matter manner um, I am gonna see what um, Meg Jeb says oh apparently we don't have Mackenzie as a target because reasons I guess where is Mackenzie right now Set his target. There we go. So 1.2. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little burn, which the RCS itself could see it's already adding <laughs> some. So I'm not going to be able to get super tight until we get into its sphere of influence, but I might as well let uh, Meg Jeb just give us that tiny extra little bit. Yeah, I mean, just using, just twisting the craft has made it four times longer. <laughs> And I do want to point out again that I have never been to McKenzie. Have no idea what it's all about. Um, <laughs> I think it's just going to end up chasing the maneuver node. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to be waiting. I'm going to just cancel that maneuver since uh, <clears throat> everything I do switches it so much. Oh, it's going out. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, now we lost our encounter entirely. You know what? I'm going to go back to before we did that since I did have a decent one. <clears throat> I think I quick saved just before. Let me make sure. Maybe. So just target. Okay, where is our encounter? Yep, we still have our encounter. So we didn't screw it up. And it's still fairly close as long as we stay exactly as we are. Quick save. Um, I'm just going to put a dummy maneuver right there. And I'm going to set an alarm for it, but I'm going to put it, uh, let's see, 50 hours away. And now let's do the traveling. How far away is that? 
third. Oh, that's uh. Oh, oh, that's our Valkner transfer window that's coming up. I was like, wow, that's not very far. That's only 38 days, but no, it's a year away. But we actually need to launch the... Uh, oh, I wasn't planning on doing that today, but uh, I think we need to take advantage of the window and return back to Kerbin, or I mean Islin, sorry, and do our launch. So maybe I'll get that launched uh, really quick before I end the stream for today. So let's head back, quick save, and head back to the tracking center. I think I have... Uh, or sorry, the space center. I th Wait, it's an is it in orbit? I'm trying to remember <laughs> if I launched the rescue ship or if it's still waiting in the VAB. Let me check what I have really quick. Uh, I'm pretty sure I launched that into orbit. Uh, the Douglas Saber is this what I need? Let's go ahead and fly it and make sure. Man, that would be nice. That would save me a launch. And everyone. Uh, and Valkner would cheer for joy as they have a small glimmer of hope of returning home. So just to make sure everything is working well, um, let's go ahead and extend the solar panels. Yeah, I think this has just been hanging out in orbit for, uh, oh, I want to say it's like two years now. <laughs> because that's how long everyone's been waiting in Valkner. Let's extend everything. Yeah, I probably should have said action groups for all that, but meh. Okay, it looks like uh, we have a burn ready to go. So it was Valkner. Um, let's go ahead and set up our maneuver. How far? What's our uh, apoaps? I think we're in a 200 uh, circular orbit, 200 kilometer orbit. So let's set that, and we want to come in at about 500. Let's just make sure that's uh, 500. So, going to be setting off right now. Show ejection angle. Okay, let's uh, add maneuver. How much do I need? Ejection 1500, more or less. Yes, quite a uh, quite a maneuver. So 1500 meters per second. Let's see when we start getting close. I probably will need to do an inclination change. Okay, no encounter. That's fantastic. Exactly what I was hoping for, right? Uh, yeah, that's... Let's see what I can do here, if anything. So this is even worse than our other burn. So that was uh, Isolinda Valkner, right? We are in the window. That's weird. Let's try setting it one more time. And by one more time, I mean many, many times until I get it. <clears throat> so that is Valkner. Make sure I have everything set. That Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, 15th time will be the charm, I'm sure. Okay, 1,500 meters per second. I will play around with... Uh... Whoa, hey, I saw one. Did you guys see that? Little tiny blip. It went really fast. There we go. Whoa. That is really tight. Let's see uh, what we're doing here, why it's so tight. Okay, I'm going to save with that up. That's farther. That's nearer. Okay, it looks like we will be able to get our encounter here. Yeah, it's gonna take, oh, actually it looks like it's gonna take right about the amount of Delta V um, that they said, or Mech Jeb said, I guess. Okay, that's pretty close. Let me mess around with the radial in and out. Oh, getting there. Okay, I need to use the uh, <laughs> editor because that's way too hard to see the little uh, for pulling it. So let's zoom in really close here and see if we can't actually get a proper encounter. I think I'm going to set everything to one since we're not that close. So which way do I need to go? Okay, there is... I'm just going to... Jeez, of course it keeps 
Resetting the target, uh, I'm going to just mess around very, very slowly. Where did Vulcan even go now? Of course, I lost a planet. Because that's totally a thing. Um, I don't even remember which way I need to go to get our encounter, but dag nabbit. Okay, I won't be using that editor because reasons and it hates me. So we are just going to do it the old drag... The old-fashioned dragging method, I guess. Uh, where are we? So we're, our encounter was somewhere over there. God, I can't even find everything. It's just a, a disgusting little orbital mess. Okay, maybe I'm going to have to... Oh, I didn't even have it click. No wonder I couldn't find it. Yep, I win. So where was our encounter? It was up... Uh, man, I don't even remember where our encounter was now. Oh, there it is. I saw it again. Right there, right there. Okay. Now we're getting close. Let's see if I... Did I lose it? Oh, I just need to zoom out more. Here we go. Yeah, we're super close. I might just end up having to uh, do the burn and correct it while we're on our way if I can't get it any closer. Because at this point, I think... I'm not doing myself any favors oh ho ho that looked favorable yes that's an encounter we're calling that good uh let's go ahead and point towards the maneuver because we actually got it and everyone is yeah happy um all of our little buddies back around uh Volkner heard the news that we found an encounter and they might be rescued maybe <clears throat> as long as they uh don't go playing around kevin anymore the uh, super creepy black hole so let's actually take a look at my stats here to see what I'm working with as far as Delta V. So we've got stage six has 1600, which will be just enough for the burn. And then it's the nuclear engine, which has 5000 and that <laughs> might be enough. Maybe question mark dot dot dot. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I do have these liquid fuel tanks on there with uh, decouplers to make sure I maximize efficiency. I didn't want to get um, too much larger, but I think... So yeah, this stage has our 5,000 meters of... Uh, oh, I suppose I should pay attention to what I'm doing. Our 5,000 meters of Delta V, which... We're going to have to use most of that up to get our encounter uh, and um, circularize around Volkner. But we should be okay. Um, uh, 9,000 meters should be more than enough, especially since this isn't even landing. It's just picking them up. But th things that are much more straightforward have gone much, much worse. So I, uh, I give it a partially optimistic nod of approval. <clears throat> so how long is this burn going to take, actually? Should show me, let's see. Where is my burn? It should show me my burn time. Okay. Node burn time, one minute. So 36 seconds. We need, At 36 seconds, we need to start our burn. So we're a little ways off. But I don't want to warp too fast since I have not set an alarm. Speaking of alarms, quick save because reasons. Five, four, three, two, one. <clears throat> Okay, burn time in 20 seconds. <clears throat> I should point out also that, uh, oh, what is it, 31 or 36? 36, okay. Actually, I'll wait till I start the burn and then I will um, look at what exactly we're sending out. Okay, while we're burning. <clears throat> so we have, uh, let's see, four or five stranded Kerbals around Valkner. So I needed to send a command pod and a storage container to be able to catch them all. And you'll notice that I do have reverse fins up here. That's because uh, this, trying to uh, re-enter this was actually really unstable. It was sort of, it twisted off of prograde when it was coming in. I have a heat shield on the bottom of it, uh, but it was twisting off of prograde, or retrograde rather, and it was putting a little bit too much stress and it uh, risked burning the um, parachutes off. So I needed to put those fins on there to kind of keep it stabilized uh, retrograde when it re-enters. If it re-enters. 
that's on Kerbin, I mean, because uh, Valkner, it's not even going to come anywhere close to landing. It's just going to pick everyone up. And the key difference between this and the Douglas, which is uh, stranded around Valkner, is that people can get into this. Because for some amazing reason, the uh, ship that uh, is around Valkner, the pod uh, does not allow Kerbals in or out because, I guess, reasons or something. I'm going to ditch the stage. I know I have a little bit of fuel left, but 64, I think, is not worth keeping. We will go ahead and activate our nuclear engine. So let's see what that did for our encounter. Um, it doesn't even show one because it really likes me. Okay, let's get out of the sphere, curb in, or Island sphere of influence, and then we can uh, adjust our approach. On our way out, I think we also had another near Pandora encounter. And we are out. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it does not show our encounter. Uh, let me check to make sure I have my alarm set. Yeah, one year, good. So I'm going to see if I can tweak our encounter a little bit now that we're uh, out here. <clears throat> but I will use the... Let me ditch this. I will be using the note editor because now I think it'll be useful. So I'm just going to add a few in and out and see what happens. I shouldn't need much to uh, regain the encounter since it was um, so close before. Hey, there we go. Let's focus the view and then see if we can't. Whoop. Okay, guess point. I guess one is a little bit much. Farther, closer. It's actually, uh, I think, going to be a pretty decent encounter once I get it there. If I can figure out exact, it's always hard to tell reference points when you're doing this. Okay, now we're getting close. Good. Oop. Okay. What are we looking at right there? Faulkner periaps. That's, uh, let me set this even less because I know we can get a little bit. Nope, that's inside of it. Yeah, we should be able to get uh, a slightly better encounter. I know that's coming in at a bit of an angle. Yeah, maybe this is as, is as good as we are going to get. So what's that doing to our uh, approach angle? Yes, this is the, uh, the exciting part, the dialing it in by matters of a few degrees. I think that's, that's sort of an ugly encounter, but... I don't think I'm going to be able to mess with it too much. How close are we there? So, Valkner does not have, if I remember collect correctly, I should be able to speak, um, an atmosphere. So, as long as we come in fairly close like that. How far away is our 26 days. Let's go ahead and execute the node. <clears throat> And then, like I, I'm going to do with the Gerald, I'll wait until I'm in its sphere of influence to really sort of tweak it. <clears throat> but it uh, should go well, I would imagine. And then, yeah, I'm going to have to really coordinate. Uh, I have a feeling... I have a feeling this is going to arrive... No, actually, I think um, we're going to arrive at McKinsey before this arrives at Valkner. 
Uh, it's a longer trip, so it's gonna. I'm actually gonna have to be juggling the two ships since they're both gonna be on their way at the same time. But that's where our handy little alarm clock comes in handy. Eh, handy, handy. Yes, and it has hands. Oh, that was really, really bad pun. Really bad pun. Did I activate the engine, actually? Yes, I did. Let's get rid of surface here. Okay, it's a short little burn, even with the nuclear engines. <clears throat> And we are, I, this should keep, uh, yeah, since this is such a subtle burn, we should keep our encounter, unlike what happened with, uh, okay, it's a little off. No, actually, that's, uh, that's almost right where I need it to be. That's pretty good. I'm glad. I think what I'm going to have to do is, uh, once I get into orbit here, I'm going to have to sort of straighten out, uh, make it an equatorial orbit, because that will probably be easiest to, uh, um, head back to uh, Isolin. Um, there should be enough fuel in all of these ships to make them r adjust their inclination to meet uh, this ship as opposed to having to use the return ship to match them. So there are four separate ships down there. Uh, they, I think what I'll try and do is use their fuel to meet the rescue ship as opposed to the other way around. Since I am a little iffy on how much I'm going to have, it's going to take a really big burn to uh, get a capture uh, in Valkner there. So let me go ahead and set an alarm for this right at the outskirts. And again, this is just a dummy maneuver, so I have a timer. And I'm going to set this um, at 50 hours out like I did with the other one. So what comes first? Oh, wow, this is actually, yeah, this is going to be before the Gerald. That's, uh, I didn't expect that. That's interesting. But they're both really, really close, so... I guess uh, that is, uh, I think, going to have to do it um, for the stream today. I have got a dinner uh, appointment that I'm heading to tonight, so that is going to have to do it for the stream. Um, but luckily I have both the maneuvers set up and both of the ships are on their way and we have solid encounters, so I should be able to get a chance to stream again come Thursday or Friday. I think my schedules open up. Um, tomorrow is another episode of Building Freeport. We're back to normal after... Um, the holiday and the special uh, <clears throat> with my publisher. So we're back to normal uh, this week. Tomorrow is building Freeport and City Skylines, and I should, like I said, have another chance um, later this week to finish up the missions and hopefully rescue. <laughs> Let me actually go see how, really quick before I finish, uh, I want to see how much fuel I have in all the little ships around Valkner um, so that I can kind of plan that for next time. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, the Douglas. Okay, so let's go take a look and see how the Douglas is doing. <clears throat> the stricken Douglas. I should. All of them should be uh, attached. I don't think I separated the ships. Um, I know one is down on... Yeah, okay. So two of them are here. That is good. Um, toaster, Reggie, and Ketchup are here. Uh, where'd the planet go? Oh, there it is. Okay, there is Valkner in all its glory. Um... So I, it was what? Naga is down on the surface, I believe. And I don't know where the other one is, but uh, they should have enough fuel. Let's take a look at just one of the little ships and see how much fuel they have, just so I know uh, what sort of burn I'm going to need to do and if it'll be possible to match their inclination. Let me zoom in here. Okay, so the Douglas ship. Okay, there's the Douglas. That's the one that's landed. Okay, they look like they are together. Let's see what this one is, and then uh, just I want to see how much fuel there is, and then I'll go ahead and finish up the stream, but I just want to check and make sure there will be enough. I doubt it. Given the history of the Douglas, um, I doubt it. How much? Oh, we have... Oh, I thought that was meters per second. Okay, we have 1,600 meters per second. Let me just see what sort of... Uh, what we would need to mess around with our um, axis change. So I'm going to get it roughly equatorial and just sort of play around and see how much I'm going to need. 
Uh, okay, it looks like it'll actually be pretty possible. So that's about 600 right there. And granted, that's not exactly the orbit I need, but you know, that's a decent orbit, uh, assuming that that's more or less what um, the rescue ship is going to look like. So yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have uh, plenty uh, to match um, and meet up with the rescue ship. So that is a, a very good thing uh, given the situation, but coordinating and getting all four of them there is going to be a little bit uh, of trouble, but that is going to be trouble for later on in the week. So I appreciate everyone uh, joining me for the stream. Things went well, so I'm a little nervous why they went well. They don't usually do that. Um, but like I said, uh, tomorrow is going to be building Freeport um, like usual at my regular time. And then Thursday or Friday, I will resume the the grand journey of the Douglas and the Gerald. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, White Guardian, for stopping in earlier and uh, helping me with everything. And I appreciate everyone watching. And I will see you guys later on in the week. So everyone take care, and I appreciate